So we have some good news. We have resolved the one drive syncing issue. We have a confirmation for that, which is awesome. We're still dealing with scanner network issue. And I really think it's a network issue. At first I thought it was a DNS, but we have more feedback from the customer. So we're gonna talk about that. And then we also have a laptop that runs slow, but only when it's connected to the VPN. Very interesting one. And we also follow up on some other tickets that we need to follow up on because that's the part of working help desk. All right, let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Aaron, also known as Kobo Man, as you saw on the screen there. We're loading into my computer that I use for teaching help desk. All right. Let's see what we have here. Uh, if you can, please do me a favor in the comment below, just say hello, hi, or present, sort of like in the class. Uh, just to kind of show me uh, that people are still interested in this type of uh, uh, content. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's a big motivation. Thank you to all people who became members and people who became subscribers of my secondary channel. Remember, I said I was going to make that a knowledge base, a knowledge base channel. So I thank you very much for going over there and subscribing. Appreciate it. All right, so first thing we're going to do is follow up on the tickets that we worked on last week. That's from the previous video. I will post a link with this arrow, red arrow pointing to it, if you want to check that out. If you're not interested in follow-ups, I do have timestamps on this video. So if, you're, if you saw this video and you're interested in a specific topic, look at the timestamps in the video, and then we, you can just skip over to that. But I have to do follow-up because it's part of the job, right? It's part of the job. If you have a ticket that's open, you got to follow up, make sure it's resolved, or do whatever you can. If you have to forward it to somebody else, then that's what you do. So this is the ticket we talked about last uh, last video, and it's about network scanner keeps going offline when users try to scan. And we didn't have these screenshots. Now we have screenshots, which is great. But my, if you recall, I said my response to the customer, to Javier, was, I think this might be an issue with DNS. Please watch my video on possible solutions. In the meantime, test for DNS issue with the host name, computer name, and or or, or contact the network team. Uh, if there are issues with uh, uh, with the scanner itself. I think the reason scanner shows offline as offline is because it's offline on the network and not turned off or going to sleep. Let me know if that helped. So the issue was the scanner, the network scanner was going to sleep right after users were uh, using it. And the same deal was with the other printers. And he responded, which is awesome. Thank you, Javier. And he said, uh, can you specify what steps I need to take to test DNS? Certainly, I can show you what we can do from a desktop support point of view or help desk point of view. It does go to sleep when I'm able to access it. It does go to sleep when I'm able to access it. Should I do a trace route? You can do that too. I have pinged the IP address of the scanner. When it's offline, it shows loss. It shows loss of data packets going. So yeah, that's a good indicator there is some kind of network issue. Every time you see... Uh, you know, data packets going in and out, that means there's something wrong with the connection for sure. And that's specifically from your computer to that. So, and I know you're working remote and, you know, this is why it's happening. Well, th that's part of the reason, but the reason lies somewhere else. And I'm afraid you may not be able to uh, resolve it yourself unless you have a network. And again, I don't know what kind of a business you work for, but it might be a larger or smaller business. Anyways, let's keep going. What else can I do? We do not have a network team. Oh, well just help desk and no one and, and no one is able to figure out how to fix it. I, I'm assuming no one is able to figure out how to fix it all right all right well we do have screenshots which is great so we're going to look at that um, okay 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 all right well let's go with the one that has a let's start with the top one here and there's a screenshot it says here should change should I, I guess, should I change any of these settings in additional settings that need to be on or off or any of the other images? Uh, Javier, what I really wanted to see was the screenshot of when you pinged it and those packet losses. If you can put that up, that would be great. I'll keep the ticket open just in case because I'm really curious about this. So what, what we're looking at is a web interface of the printer itself set up, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. Okay. So this screenshot is kind of cut off. I mean, I see the settings that you have. You got URL, which is, I'm assuming, the URL for the printer. Uh, you got USB device 
and yeah it's cut off unfortunately I don't know exactly what's going on to the right here I just see like kind of half of the image store image to memory use TLS uh, TLS is another form of uh, encryption kind of older form actually remote UI access password all right let me see what I can see in those other screenshots remember guys whenever you're troubleshooting so oh I think this is the second half of it probably every time you're troubleshooting something the more information you have the easier it is to troubleshoot okay let's look at this here so now we know that there is a drop packet information issue let me show you what that means and normally when you ping a website I'm gonna try to keep this in the middle of the screen ping for example cosmicnovo.com which is my website here is the pings right this is just a basic four uh, four packet sent and receive uh, so your computer you send a request for connection and you get a response from the server uh, in in the form of pack, packet meaning the data size uh, so it sends a packet that's size of 32 uh, uh, bytes and then it gives you how long it took to respond this is normal 24 milliseconds all the way up to 25 milliseconds well he's saying that you know he's got some of them that are dropping which is bad that means that there is a connection intermittent intermittent connection you know this is the reflection of a normal zero percent loss that means that all the packets or like for example if you you know data that's been sent back and forth there's zero loss that means all of them were sent and received I would concentrate on what's going on with with that I really want to see a screenshot of that and do a trace route as well which is done just type in trace RT and then the name of the server and then it's gonna go through the uh, hoops I don't want to do it here now because it takes a while but do that and send me a screenshot of that um, if you want to blur out some IP addresses that's fine uh, but we just want to see what's going on with that and because there might be a, a break in connection somewhere along the line when you do a trace route but it's basically you're making a route you take a route sort of like you're doing navigation take a route to that server or to that scanner that's online so um, it'll, it'll show you if there's a break or some kind of big delay sort of is if you're just driving on the road right if the road is closed then it's not gonna work if the if there is a huge congestion on the road somewhere and it takes forever to get there then that's a problem too that's one correlation on how to uh, explain a route um, so we got IP address settings we got DHCP off which is fine you don't want DHCP you want a static IP address and we got IP address set which is fine subnet mask that's a standard subnet we got gateway address I mean it, it's not visible here blurted out which is perfectly fine but this is where your location of your main uh, switch is or if you have a, like a home router or um, it would be basically the same as your home router so let's let's say you have internet and your IP address for your internet that's the same thing as your gateway address it's like a gateway is another name for like a door to something in this case to the network or to the internet all right DNS settings we got primary DNS address okay secondary so I would okay so in case this is a DNS issue which if you're losing packets it may not be it may be something else it may be some kind of a switch on the network where that scanner is connected to so that's one thing that I think about wherever that scanner is connected physically one of those switches or one of those network routes might be bad so if you have access to that switch then check it out there might be some some issue with that physically since you don't have a network team uh, and I know you can't get there which complicates things for you but that's another thing to talk about I mean that's part of the network and that's where this scanner is this network scanner is now you know if you have primary if it's a DNS issue and you just have a uh, you know the name of DNS here or the IP address then you might want to switch to using either the IP address and like if there's an issue with the DNS then uh, you can bypass it by pointing to a um, um, uh, the um, the IP address directly but here it is these DNS settings this is just the location where the DNS server is so you know I, I can't verify this I'm assuming you have the correct information and we got the host name the main name okay that's just standard stuff I don't see anything wrong here uh, DNS dynamic update 
if it's an issue with you know dns you might try to turn this on but i don't think it is since you're having drop i don't really i don't want you to talk concentrate on dns at this point i really think it's a connection issue uh, ip version 6 off which is fine most people don't use it the ip version 6 is mostly used when you have way too many ip addresses uh, for the company and you kind of run out of ip addresses which is impossible in his case since he doesn't even have a network team uh, wins okay that's that's fine lpd printer settings that's fine yeah these are just computer settings here okay i'm i'm really i really want you to concentrate on let's see this other on the connection issue because you can't reach it sometimes and i don't think these settings are wrong extension use http okay 24 SNTP on, that's fine. 24 hours, use proxy off. You don't have a, doesn't sound like you have a proxy anyways. So keeping this off, that's fine. Um, it, you can have an issue with proxy server if the traffic is routed over the proxy server. That's usually used for just internet settings, not necessarily all the network settings, but it's off probably because you don't even have a proxy. Uh, I'm assuming that. Yeah, this looks fine to me as far as I can tell. I would really concentrate on doing a trace route and when you do a trace route you can tell let's do it here I wasn't gonna do it because it takes a while but I'm gonna do it here anyways trace RT cosmic novo dot com so this is going to take 30 hops and it's going to take a while i have a video on this how to use trace route and how to figure out where the break is in a connection and you can certainly do that um, some cases you will have you see how right here on, on hop number four there is no response and it's going to fail well that could be normal if a router is set or a router or a modem is set to show no response but you know then but this is a starting point if you find an IP address, as soon as this finishes here, that is causing problems, that's providing no response, like these asterisks here, then there's an issue there, right? There is an issue, unless it's normal for that switch to send this type of signal. This is mainly done so the hackers don't um, attack it, meaning that it shows like it's invisible, it's not there, basically. Uh, but, so, and it's going to take a while. I will put... A link to my trace RT video to give you more idea but if you see a break like this it gives you where the break is and it will eventually give you the IP address or host name or whatnot and then you will be like oh, okay well what is that where is it breaking and then you can say well it's breaking right after this so what is this and then you have to figure out this is why I wanted you to route it to network team but unfortunately you're gonna have to figure this out now um, and if you don't have access to any of these jumps or these nodes, then you might have a bigger issue. But, you know, you might have, it, it might be at the switch level for, you see, it's taking forever. So um, it might be at the switch level where this scanner is. That's where I would concentrate on, but do a trace route first and let me know. I'll keep it open. I will, I, okay, so I know I know you're watching my videos, so I'm just gonna let you respond to me. Normally, I would just send a reply on the on the ticket itself, but you're gonna watch my video. I'm sure of it. And let me know. Uh, do that trace route and and see if it's a, maybe a switch or. All right, let's follow up on this ticket from Oluchi. This was related to Outlook outgoing email won't save in the sent items folder. Okay, so we said in this one, this is everyone with PC Sport. Uh, the issue may be related to inbox size limit or some kind of a custom rule setup that would move sent emails. Please let me know. So the issue in here was the any all the sent items were just disappearing. They were no longer in the sent items folder. You know, when you send an email, uh, things are your emails are your copy of your email is saved to sent item folder. And I told them to uh, check to see. It, if it's inbox size or some kind of custom rule that would uh, move sent emails. We didn't get a response and unfortunately I don't have time to uh, wait for 
a response from this. The only reason I'm keeping the Javier one open is because he responded. And that's appreciated. Normally, in a, obviously, obviously, in a help desk, you want to resolve issues before you close them. This is just me making space so I can move on to other people's tickets. I have lots of tickets. I've got 19 open, so we got to keep moving. This was about a sync issue with OneDrive. Uh, and the issue was I'm not able to sync OneDrive after it has been migrated to new domain. So the network uh, that he works at, where Marvin works, has migrated to new domain, and now he can't sync it. My suggestion was, oh, okay, it looks like he, he responded, which is awesome. My suggestion was this issue could be really related to authentication, meaning different logging credentials being used within domain. And then if it's not that, then it's a network issue, right? So... Oh, okay, Marvin responded. Thanks, Marvin. I appreciate it. I saw your comment in the in, on YouTube as well. Thank you. All right. This issue has been resolved. I had the user click on the OneDrive icon, then go to settings, go to general tab. There's an option to unlink the PC. I clicked it and it had the user and I had the user link the PC again. It then asked her to log in with her email. And once we went through the setup screens, it started to sync files. I followed up uh, with with her this morning and she stated that files are syncing. So yeah, it was exactly what I kind of mentioned, uh, not to kind of put, pat myself on the back, but in this case, I was right about authentication issue. What, what Marvin explained was exactly that. And what exactly happened was that the OneDrive that was being used was using um, authentication from the previous domain. Now, it still may be the same login but you know how you, uh, every, like, for example, let's say, let's kind of equate this to a website login, right? And OneDrive in this case was a desktop version, but let's equate it. So once you log into a website and you authenticate yourself, you know how you sometimes have to do a multi-factor authentication where it asks you to you know, verify the code that sends to your phone number, or you have a token or sends an email to your email and it gives you a code or a link that authenticates you and it creates a session, a new session for you. It creates a new session for you and that session will expire. But in this case, it was saved locally. And the same thing happens on the website. So if something changes and you don't have a way to update that session, even if it's the same, even if it's the same login and password, uh, you may have to refresh it because the computer holds on to that old session information which may expire but it's like sort of like in the form of a cookie if it's a website cookie is a local uh, name for a data uh, basically just a memory of where you went and the things that you've done and it saves it in a format of what they call a cookie but it's just a file that has that information so that's what happened here i'm going to say i'm going to respond to marvin and i'm going to say that is awesome Take care. Good job, Marvin. I'm glad you got to figure it out. And again, thank you for submitting this ticket. It's awesome. If you have more, hey. A anybody who's watching this, I know a lot of people watching this are actually IT people. If you have an issue that you want me to talk about, you can submit them to this ticketing system and I will talk about it. And, you know, I these videos come out like once a week mainly because you know, people don't have time to watch more than one video right this is why i have my second channel as well for basically each individual topic that i'm making it's going to have its own short format video as a quick possible quick solution to all the things that i make in a video so we don't have any more to follow up this is just the one from javier so let's do uh let's do one more uh, okay, so this is another from Javier. Uh, since I've extendedly talked about it, and we're gonna still happen, Javier. We, let's let's hold off on this. Uh, no offense, Javier. Let's just hold off on this one because it seems like it might be similar, and there might be it. It might be related. Every time you have multiple issues that are related to scans, uh, some kind of uh, scanners or printers on the same network, I'm afraid it might be related. I will, however, assign this ticket to myself, and this is what you might want to do. If you see multiple tickets coming from uh, coming from same person or same department, 
and you feel like it's related and most likely it is trust your gut if you feel like uh, there is an issue all right let's do let's see how many more we can do we are definitely going to do, we're definitely going to work on sergio sanchez's ticket that's for sure and all right let's pick the first one let me see if that's is that the most okay yeah that's the one sergio thank you for uh, sergio sergio thank you very much for submitting this ticket i appreciate it all right powerpoint how to add audio to my powerpoint slides mm, well there's just a setting in powerpoint i don't have powerpoint installed in here but i'm sure there's just a setting um I, I hate to blow you off on this meaning that i'm not trying to ignore you or anything i really appreciate you submitting this ticket but help desk mm, i guess in some cases might be for this type of uh, scenario but what we call in tech support what we call this in tech support is a training issue and, and i mean no offense basically uh, help desk is typically not there to train people how to use programs but to fix them so if you told me that you've had an issue where you cannot add audio to your PowerPoint slides, but you know how to do it, then that would be a help desk issue. This here, unfortunately, is a training issue, and help desk doesn't do that normally, unless you're help desk for Microsoft Office. You know, I don't know. But I'm going to say, I'm going to reply to you. I'm going to say, hello, this is Irvin with... PC support. I have your ticket about PowerPoint audio. Did you have any issues adding audio to it? And I don't mean that as in do you not do you know how to do it? I mean was there an error or something so th the reason i'm doing this is because you know there's no specific issue here except it just says how do i add audio to my powerpoint slide uh, there are tutorials for how to do this i'm sure there is just a menu if i had powerpoint here i would show you i don't know visually on top of my head how to describe to you exact menu because powerpoint has probably 100 different options 100 different options so as far as i know there is like a toolbar on top and then you just click add add audio but again help desk is not necessarily for training but more for issues to resolve issues you know i'll i'll keep it i'll keep the ticket open just to see what happens in case it's in a help desk issue where you can't do it you know then we got a scanner issue so we'll go keep going with sergio Okay, so this one is scanner issue and it says no driver. Now, again, you're not being very specific here and I would really like if you had more details on this. It says no driver. Well, where does it say no driver? Like, what? Is this something that you're trying to add to your computer? Is this something that you're physically doing on a scanner? Uh, it, I'm assuming it's on your computer because it says no driver. In this case, Maybe it just needs to be installed. So I'm going to say maybe scanner just needs to be installed. Can you please provide more details about the... I'm going to say issue. I'm going to say situation. Situation. stupid stupid the uh, look at this it doesn't know yeah i spelled it correctly i don't know why it's telling me it's a grammar issue whatever <laughs> i'm gonna keep this one open and we're gonna move on for those reasons because so far these don't seem to be they, these don't seem to be help desk issue so no, please don't get mad at me sergio i these so far just don't seem to be a help desk issue but more of training issues which if that's the case then you might ask you might need to ask your coworker, your manager to train you or however it is in your company which i just don't know and it's very common to actually see these help desk uh type of tickets where somebody is you know wanting to know how to do something 
it's it just depends on the company you work for but you know it, it happens it happens javier and excel constantly okay so after an activity okay multiple users javier i really think there's a network issue man yeah so this is about excel that is freezing constantly about two minutes before it reacts entering numbers in the cell let me know yeah let me know i'm going to assign this ticket to myself we're going to do a whole follow-up again on on javier let me know if if there's uh if these people are accessing excel from like a server that has excel documents and they're doing it to share share it or some kind of weird way where they're using a network to do this let me know because i really feel like there are network issues for for your company there all right working remote laptop running slow from william davis thank you for submitting tickets appreciate it all right working remote a laptop running slow working remote laptop running slow all right very very informative so far hello i was issued i was issued an hp laptop since i work in the field several days out of the month all right cool very recently there has been a noticeable sluggishness in its performance it seems most apparent when i'm tunneling uh, vpn i'm assuming when you're using vpn when i work offline it seems to recover and perform as expected thanks in advance so the issue is i think you nailed it here is when you said tunneling um, another way to describe this is when he's using you know when he's using a, a vpn uh, when you when you use vpn it creates a tunnel some people call that a tunnel you know it's just a connection but you can call it a tunnel for the easier understanding or to visualize it so in this case we have uh, it's a laptop and whenever he's using vpn it starts to run slow so the issue here is most likely the vpn because everything points to it right everything points to it now i'm going to think and write at the same time here never talked to william i've talked to william before but i'm not sure if it's the same william but i'm going to, anyways i'm going to introduce myself no big deal this is Irvin with pc support I have your ticket about slow laptop. Now, the reason I always say I have your ticket about slow laptop is because in a business environment where you have multiple people working help desk, you want to let them know that I have your ticket about the laptop because, you know, maybe he's expecting John or Patel or somebody else to work on a ticket. I don't know. I'm just saying, hey, I'm also working piece of support. That's all I'm saying and since well here's what i'm going to say i'm going to say try below steps yeah let's do the step thing we haven't done the step instructions in a, in, a, in a while in the last couple of videos i want to say maybe i don't know i've done so many videos of this. this is 24 i think uh step one i'm going to say do a perform a bandwidth bandwidth test with 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 test to see how fast the oh wow vpn server is and the, this is the vpn server that you're connected to so after well i'm going to say do before and after you connect somebody asked me if i'm using a mechanical keyboard i'm actually not this is just a regular i guess you could say gaming keyboard but it's just kind of fancy uh, logitech keyboard it's not super flashy but yeah, i guess because they can hear the typing it's not mechanical at all but i like it i've had it for years perform a banded twist twist <laughs> perform a banded bandwidth test to see how fast the vpn server is do before and after you connect so this will give you an idea if the issue is literally related to just after you connect the vpn because at this point i'm assuming that the things slow down for you 
and the things that you're talking about here the sluggishness and its performance is most likely related to either the bad connection where it's slow connection and the most things that you're using which is highly likely while working remote are web-based that means that everything has to go over the vpn that you're connecting to and if that vpn server is fast regardless of how fast your local internet is it's going to be slow all right another thing that could be happening is i'm going to do two check to see if updates are being installed once you connect to the VPN server. Now, this may not be the case all the time, but some companies, some company computer, your work computer, when you connect to the internet, like your Wi-Fi or whatever, it may start updates right away. But a lot of cases, a lot of times, it won't start the updates until you connect to the company's network. Why? Because the company uses their own version of uh let's see software mm, software management that's the word i'm looking for software management tool and then it waits for you to connect to the company's network which happens which happens i'm going to say which may happen once you connect to the company's network and i'm going to emphasize again VPN may be it may be a case may not be the case so check the task manager I've showed this many times look at the task manager see what kind of what's going on in the background how much CPU usage is being used if you see something that's using a lot then you know expand it and see what it is and they'll give you an idea of what's going on so it could be updates and then I'm going to say for step three try a different VPN server if available. All right, please let me know if that helped. And you know, we could talk about, you know, we could talk about other issues that may cause sluggishness and performance issues, but it seems to be related to tunneling also known as VPN. All right, guys, I think I've had enough of today's session, meaning that I'm a little tired. <laughs> so I'm going to go work on editing this video. Uh, so I'm, I typically record these after work on Fridays, sometimes on Saturdays morning for the video to be available on actually Saturday. This video has to be available on Saturday for people to join because when you join you get early access so people that are joined became members they get one day early access so around 24 hours or so everybody else gets them on sunday so the reason is obviously because just to, as a show of appreciation for people who are throwing a couple of dollars my way for coffee you know so that's what's happening and i'm going to work on editing this right now i'm recording this after after my work which is in the afternoon and it's going to go into the night. So I have to work on editing this. If it's any longer, then uh, it will be just way too much work for me, unfortunately. I will keep these videos coming. I know people that are supporting me are, uh, are leaving beautiful comments. I really appreciate them. I see you guys. I really see you. And, and I don't know how, to, how else to explain it, but that I appreciate the motivation. It's a big, big deal for me. And I know I say this quite often, but it really is appreciated. And I want you to know that I, it just means a lot what you guys do for me as well. It's a big deal, big deal, big deal. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope uh, your family is doing well as well. And I wish you best of luck in, in everything. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.